Hello everybody. Today we are going after the Rockwell notes. Um, most of his notes are on land. Um, one, two, three of his notes are in caves. Um, at least one of them being the Cave of Lost Hope. Um, so one of his notes is definitely more end game. But for the bulk of his notes, they're pretty easy for players to get to. So we're going to head, let's see, we got water, we got food, we're going to take Kiwi, and that's it. We're going to travel pretty light. Oh, I still have my snowshoes on. We're going to keep them on just in case we have to go into a snow biome. Um, I don't remember very many of them being in the snow biome, so there probably isn't going to be a lot of them there. But, all right, we're off. I'll see you at the net first note. All right, everybody, we are here. This is kind of the area where we're at. So that's Carno Island there. So what you want to do is to fly into this little bay. And you're going to be looking for, see the three rocks? Actually, I think it might be four. You're looking for that little cluster of rocks with the trees in the middle. And here we go. Greetings and salutations, dear reader. If these words are gracing your eyes, then you have had the good fortune to find the journal of Sir Edmund Rockwell, stupendous scholar, gallant gentleman, and explorer extraordinaire. It also means that it's entirely possible that I've met some unseemly end on this fascinating but exceedingly dangerous island that I call home. I suppose you could have also stolen it, or I could have misplaced it. In which case, please proceed to either hang your head in shame or return it to me at once, whichever is appropriate. Regards, Sir Edmund Rockwell. <laughs> kind of a, a goofy thing. All right. But Sir Rockwell's note is at 25.2 latitude, 73.1 longitude. And we are off to the next one. All right, so this next one is right up here. The red obelisk is right there. And on the top of this hill, mountain, whatever you want to call it, in the middle of this island, are these wonderful ruins. And... The wondrous properties of the flora on this island will never cease to amaze me. If I told my colleagues in London that I could create a concoction capable of erasing someone's memories, I'd be laughed out of the room and never invited to tea again. Yet here it sits, my mind wipe tonic. As usual, I've had tribal leaders groveling at the gates of Rockwell Manor just for the tiniest of samples. And for the recipe, oh, the bounties I've been offered. I'm not interested in their riches, though. I have their protection, supplies for my studies, and all the time in the world. What more could I ask for? So he kind of sounds like an English gentleman, but he does come off to be like a little high on himself. So, <laughs> um, whoa, dude. It got foggy really fast. All 
Interesting. And it left just as quickly. That was really weird. All right. Well, oh, I forgot. This one is at latitude 83.2, longitude 24.7. And we are off to the next one. All right, so this next one, we're right here on the map. And you can see this used to be um, an archway with a big tree in ASE. But so we're gonna come down in here in hiding. These tribal negotiations give me a headache every time. The Black Thumbs are mad that the Painted Sharks sunk two of their barges. But the Painted Sharks say that the barges were too close to Southern Haven and they were perfectly within their rights to sink them as per the Southern Isle Accords. Typically, neither side is willing to budge. What a bother. I'd just as soon mind wipe the lot of them and return to my studies. Alas, such is the fate of the island's most respected neutral entity. At least the Painted Sharks brought some fresh fish. Perhaps I'll side with them. <laughs> well, he obviously plays favorites. Depending on, you know, what's in it for him type deal. We are at latitude 54.8, longitude 13.7. I always thought this area was pretty. It's not as pretty as ASE, but it's still pretty. It's a nice little cul-de-sac. All right, we are off to the next one. All right, this next one is on Carno Island. So we're right here. And you'll see this beautiful little, I say little, it's not very little, um, it ruins. Make sure we're good. All right, here we go. Any chemist worth his salt knows the irreplaceable value of testing. Until a tonic has been rigorously tested, it is less useful than water. If only I could persuade this island's less intellectual inhabitants to see that tests on Mesopithecus serve well for early trials, but they are no replacement for genuine human subjects at later, safer stages. By subjects, I of course mean willing participants that are prepared to risk mild headaches and much less mild nausea for the sake of science. The laughing skulls offered rather less willing participants at one point, but I declined. With how difficult it is to find volunteers these days, I sometimes regret it. Hmm. So now he's doing human experiments, or asking for human experiments, but having a hard time finding willing volunteers. <laughs> Interesting. He still seems happy-go-lucky, so that's good. But we shall see what happens. Off to the next one. All right, so we are down here at the Hidden Lake, which if you don't know where that is, oops, not what I wanted to do. Let me get away from it here for a minute. So there's the hidden light on your map, that little bitty circle right there. So 
as you come into the hidden lake, you see that big rock right there, and you can just see right around the tree here. Compies too. Anything else want to try and take us on? All right. And you can see it hiding right in here between the tree and the wall. Is Rockwell number five. Miss Walker's impromptu visits are always an unexpected pleasure. After that headache with the sharks and Blackfoots, a lively tea time discussion about the abnormalities of the Ark's ecosystem was precisely what I needed. Thank goodness I've managed to find an intellectual colleague that shares my love for the sciences. It saddens me to think that Miss Walker's charming colonial accent would keep her out of the more prestigious institutions and societies back home. Another of the Ark's wonders, it is a true meritocracy, unlike any in the modern world. If Miss Walker and I could find and cultivate more minds like ourselves, we could create a True scientific utopia. So, Miss Walker obviously is Helena. So, and he apparently likes her just as much as she likes him. So, that's good. She definitely considers him, or at least in the notes that we've seen, she considers him almost like a father figure, a colleague, someone she can go to and run ideas through. Um, and she holds his opinion in very high regard. So it's nice to know that he enjoys her too. Although the remark about her accent, I think is kind of silly. I think he's just, it shows what year and time he must be in. Um, so we'd have to do some history to kind of, I want to say he was probably before her time. Like Helena seems more modern. Um, oh, there is Zena, sorry. Um, and Rockwell seems more in the past than she did. So in his day, obviously there was discrimination going on not only because she's a woman but because of her accent so very interesting off to the next one and I almost forgot we are at latitude 21.2 longitude 69.1 now we're off to the next one <laughs> all right so this next one If you come to this side of the swamp, so the swamp's mm -hmm. on our right, on the edge here. So if you come there, and you're gonna face this way. We're gonna back up here so you can get a good idea where we're at. So there's the swamp. Here's the first set of rocks on the other side of the swamp. And we're going to head straight in. And you see the one big tree there and the big tree by the rocks. And we're going to go down 
Get out of my way, trees. I heard something, that's why I stood up. <clears throat> Maybe not. All right. So if you come to this nice, big, beautiful tree here and these little group of palm trees, Where is it at? There we go, you see. That does not sound good. All right, I think we're okay. This expedition to White Sky Peak has been just splendid, top to bottom. Weather's been marvelous. I've found excellent floral samples, and the local hunters had more woolly rhino horns than you could shake a stick at. I even managed to find volunteers for my latest experiment. It turns out that it was simply a matter of linguistics. Those who are wary of experimental potions are much more receptive to experimental food. Once my endothermic <coughs> paste was rechristened Freer Curry, people were clamoring to test it. It has moderate nutritional value, so it's not technically a deception. It's just favorable language in the name of progress, that's all. Perfectly moral. Mm. He's starting to dance around. Maybe not being completely truthful. <laughs> I don't know. He just seems a little off to me, but all right. Oh, wait a minute. Let me give you guys the exact coordinates mm. for this. We are at Latitude 59.1, longitude 83. All right, we are off to the next one. All right, so the next one, we're in this area here. And you'll see kind of an open space and there's a nice little ruin here sadly my freer curry trials cannot begin immediately as the volunteers have a much more difficult journey to rockwell manor than i after all i couldn't very well carry every one of them on archimedes yes the Argentavis could clutch one of his talons, but I've always found the practice to be barbaric. The rest of the Ark may be embroiled in feudal savagery, but a gentleman always maintains his class and dignity. At any rate, I must have my assistants renovate the guest compound. Naturally, I would never let strangers into the manor proper, but there's no reason their stay should not reflect my civilized standards. He sees himself as a civilized gentleman. There's more. All right. 
So we are at latitude 44.1, longitude 81.3. And that should put you right on to Rockwell note number seven. All right, off to the next one. <coughs> All right, for this next one, we are at the edge of the Redwoods where the river comes out. For those of you who don't know, that is latitude 68.9, longitude 35.3. What was that? Oh, it's the Titanus. Okay. So we are going to go in here, hopefully without thylas jumping out of trees on us. Of course, I mention it. <laughs> Good boy. I've got to bring him down closer to me. Oh, my word. Good boy, Huey. <laughs> All right. Let's try this again, shall we? So you follow the river in and you should come to ruins. Yay! And the first set of ruins, not the second one, because there's, see how it moves up? The first set is where we're gonna go, right where that log is in these stairs. This is where we're headed. Having readily available subjects has helped my experiments tremendously, even if their numbers dwindled over time. Not only was I able to curb the side effects of my Freya Curry's endothermic properties, but I managed to bring out an additional benefit of the mixture. Now it also lowers the subject's metabolism, letting them go longer without needing food. Marvelous! I hadn't even considered that as a possibility. Why, with all I've learned from these experiments, I imagine that I could reverse the effects of the curry and create a concoction to aid survival in extreme heat as well. I must find more volunteers, post haste. <laughs> Oops, I forgot. So we are at, oh, up we go. We are at latitude 64.4, longitude 34.1. And that sits us up right on rock wall number eight. All right, we'll see y'all at the next one. For this next one, I've had to drop Huey off. You're gonna need scuba gear for this one. I don't think it's in this one. No, nope, it's not. It's in this one. Put all of this in there. All right, we're gonna take, oops, one, two, three, four, take that and that. That should be good.
We'll leave that on. All right. Make sure we're good on food. And we're going to take good old Siren. And I will see you guys in the Cave of Lost Hope. See you in a bit. All right, I lied. It's not the Cave of Lost Hope. It's the Cave of Lost Faith. <laughs> but here we go. Down to the cave. Um, if you don't know where this cave is, we are so here's what it looks like. can see the rocks on the side there. We are right here on the map. Latitude 53.9, longitude 11.2. So you're gonna go down. And you're gonna see like this little U-shape is the best way to describe it in the rocks. Now be careful because there's normally like mosses. Mosses are normal right here. Um, you can see dunk a donkey there. Donkeys are pretty common right here. Um, so definitely not a beginner place to be hanging out. Now where's the cave opening? <laughs> Why can't I find the cave? Where's it at? There it is. I think. Yes. All right, so here it is. We are at latitude 53.2, longitude 10.4. So we're gonna go on in here. Out of the two underwater caves, this one's the easier of the two. All right, so here's where it kind of splits off. We want to kind of hang to the right. I actually don't think it matters at this point in the tunnel because I think it just goes round and round.
Taking my chances. We're going to go right inside this little cubby hole. And right up the stairs. I decided to seek out volunteers for my next experiment among the island's larger tribes. I thought that surely they would be willing to help after I patiently moderated so many of their frivolous disputes. How idealistic of me. Instead, they have yet another favor to ask. Apparently, there's a new tribe that's behaving rather aggressively, and no one can successfully negotiate with its leader. So naturally, they have turned to me. It's rather bothersome, but I can't touch their logic. If Sir Edmund Rockwell cannot reason with this Nerva fellow, then who can? Hmm. Nerva. Oh, and if you were wondering... For those of you who want to know, it's latitude 61.6, longitude 16. Coordinates never helped me out in caves much, but if you're one of those people that like them, there you go. <laughs> All right, to get out of here, we're going to go out the same way we came in. Also, there is sometimes a red drop right there. I just want to take the meat off of it for her. There we go. Oh, we can drop that. All right. So now we just follow the tunnel back out. <laughs> you can see the eel following us. Whee! Following the tunnel back out. need to breed stamina onto her, onto Siren. All right. And we are out. And I will see you all at the next one. All right. So for this next one, there's the green obelisk. We are 
right here in this little eddy where the ocean and the river meet. <clears throat> and you're looking for this little Okay, there just still is this little thing right here. Well, I found the report on Mr. Nerva to be rather exaggerated. And as an Englishman, one might imagine that I'd view Roman leadership with some disdain. Yet, in my experience, I found Mr. Nerva to be both honest and intellectually engaging. In fact, after a lengthy conversation, I dare say that Mr. Nerva has the right of it when it comes to this island's politics. As the Romans created Pax Romans, perhaps this new legion will create Pax Arkham. Even if it doesn't, I doubt it will harm my research. So I see no reason to interfere in this pointless squabble. Huh. So he's decided that he likes Mr. Nerva. Interesting. And that makes note number 10. So that's going to end it for this video. And I will see you all next time. Bye. That's the wrong one. There we go. <laughs>